Let's see how the Joes hold up to the pros. Let them talk, man. In the crowd. Let them talk. You don't stop walking until you get to that light. And that's how you overcome adversity. Man. Things are going to happen. But what are you going to do about them? Hey, we about to get after it today. I got a couple of my NFL guys, Gerald McCoy and Chase Daniel, welcoming our good friend Emmett Williams from My Zone in the house. Let's see how the Joes hold up to the pros. And don't forget, let them talk. And then, and then the point system is in the bottom right hand corner and this is where the magic is. So when you're in the gray zone like I am, I'm at 50% right now, Upper right. You, you, you're, getting, uh, you're getting one point per minute. When you go into the 60s, you're in the blue zone like Rick over there, you're in the blue zone, you get two points per minute. When you go into the 70s, you get into the green zone, three points per minute. When you go into the 80s, you're in the yellow zone, four points per minute. And then when you go into the red zone, which is like redlining, um, you're also, well, you get four be, points. We're oh, going to be in the red zone. Oh, you're red zone. We're going to be in the red zone. Chase we, likes we, the red zone. I like yeah, red zone. he likes the red zone. Yeah. Touchdown. See, see, Gerald, Gerald steps up in the red see. zone. You got Joe's versus the pro. Oh, I caught up to you. Oh, uh, you ain't paying me. You I got four on you, baby. Talking lie, talking lie. They like to compete, they like to talk. Oh, Let them talk. Hey, right. Let them talk. They want to talk. Ten, all the way up. They're talking, they think they got this. Get off the ground. They think they got this. Let them talk, baby. Get on the ground. Let them talk. So they're up, one nothing. Give a false sense of confidence. Every great, great coach has to build the confidence of their athletes. Let them talk. Let them yap. It's four quarters long, baby. They don't know what's about to hit them. Oh, you've been coming out here for uh, nine years, the Fitness Quest, Hannah, and that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, before we get into the football stuff, I understand you have this unique, crazy relationship with superheroes. I do. What, what's talking me about what this superhero? I don't know what you're talking what's about. What's this superhero thing? I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know. It's not like I like superheroes or anything. Well, who's your favorite superhero? Um. Okay. So a lot of people think that my favorite superhero is Batman, which it is. But that is DC. My favorite Marvel superheroes are Wolverine and Hulk. So, so you you like Batman? I love Batman. What What do you like about Batman? The thing I love about Batman um, is that, you know, a lot of people will argue that he's not a superhero. Interesting. Um, but he's in the Justice League. He actually put together the Justice League. He actually runs the Justice League. He's the leader of the Justice League. A lot of people have this thing where they believe that Superman is the leader. He's really not. He's just the big gun. Being the big gun don't always make you the leader. Mm. They'll follow Batman. He puts together the plans. He's never, uh, you're never going to out prepare him. He's never going to go into a situation where he's not prepared. And he's going to have countermeasures for anything that he goes against. And uh, he's going to be the hardest working dude in the room. So that's why I love Batman because uh, he doesn't have any actual superpowers, mm. but he's able to go toe for toe, neck and neck, step for step with all these superpowered superhumans. Why would be Superman? Yeah. I like Superman, but as a leader too. Like, you know, yeah, I'm Superman, trying to save the Superman world. Superman puts across a great message, but I think Batman's a better leader. Ooh, deep thoughts here on today's live. When I, when I think about Gerald McCoy and the longevity he's had in the league, uh, there's some specific reasons why he's risen to uh, be one of the top defensive tackles in the league. And year after year, year after year, he is consistently voted amongst his peers as one of the fiercest competitors there are. But I think there's 10 reasons. And the first one I want to talk about is sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice and what that takes. Uh, Joe, talk about the sacrifices it takes to be the best at what you do. Well, I mean, just me being out here to be able to do this this live. Um, I live in Florida. I'm on the West Coast. I come all the way across the country every off season to make sure that I'm prepared and ready to go so I can do what it is necessary for me to remain at the top of the league, to remain as one of the best at what I do. Um, 
but what a lot of people don't realize is I have a wife and five children. Mm. Five children. Mm -hmm. One in high school, one in middle school, a set of twins that are four and a newborn. You know how hard it is to leave your newborn and go all the way to the West Coast just so you can prepare, so you can remain at the top of the league, you can continue to be the player that you've been, but the, how, the amount of, that you sacrifice determines how much you really want what it is you say that you want. Number nine of 10, uh, I love this one. Be the hardest worker in the room. What does that mean to you? Uh, to be the hardest worker in the room doesn't always mean, um, doesn't always mean, oh, I can run the fastest, mm. or I'm the strongest person. But you take 100% of who you are and give 100 of what you are. My father always told me, even if your body feels 60, even if it feels 70, a person might feel 100, but if they're giving 50 of that 100 mm. and you're 70%, but you're giving 100 of that 70, you're working harder than them. How do you outwork people? You outprepare them. Mm. You outlast them. You outthink them. Mm. You outfight them. Mm. And you always have Woo. the will to never lose. Mm. Always be the hardest working person in the room. There's a lot of different ways to do that. It's not always who's the fastest or who's the strongest. Who's the smartest? Yeah, boy! Who cares the best? Yeah, preparation. Uh, talk about preparation. Uh, on any aspect, how do you prepare uh, for you know games in the NFL? What I do is, when I know I'm about to play a certain team, yeah, yeah. when I know certain things are about to happen, right. i tell you what I do. I actually Google the actual offensive linemen that I'm about to face. Yep. And I Google them, I Google their old injuries, I Google recent injuries, I Google their family. You may say, oh, you a creep, you Googling their family. <laughs> no, I'm preparing. Yep. So when you Google this person, you know they're a family man, you know they're fighting for something bigger than just money. You know that you're gonna have a fight on your hands. So you know when you go against this guy, he's gonna bring it every day because he's not just fighting for just him, he has a wife. He has children. Mm. Maybe he lost a family member. So you know that mentally he's going to come in. You know you have to be take your mind to a completely different level to face this person. That's a it. lot of people don't think like that. And that's why I love Batman because he prepares that same way. He prepares for anything that may come his way. What are some things when you talk about overcoming adversity? How, if there's, a, let's say, a high school athlete that's hurt, um, if they're going through a tough time, mom and dad are, are facing some difficulties at home, how do you overcome adversity? Well, just some of the things that I've I've had to face when I was 19, my mother passed away my mm. first year in the NFL. I tore my bicep tendon. My second year in the NFL, I tore my other bicep tendon. So my whole football career has been mm -hmm. like this and I've had a lot of adversity. One thing I always tell anybody, but definitely young athletes, is I always say this, you have a, a goal and you want to reach that goal yep. and there's going to be a lot of different things that come this way come that way come this way come from behind you but that goal is that way mm. okay so i always say this if you put yourself in a hallway let's say a old school hotel hallway and mm. at the end of that hallway there's this window where a light is shining through okay when you're walking up that hallway there's doors on the right there's doors on the left this door is going to open your goal is not that way it's that way that door is going to open. Your goal is not that way. It's that way. It don't matter what come from this side. Don't matter what come from that side. Don't matter what's behind you. You don't stop until you reach that light. That light at the end of the preach hallway it, is preach your it, goal. Preach it, so baby. It doesn't matter what preach. happens. You don't stop walking until you get to that light. And that's how you overcome adversity. Man. Things are going to happen. But what are you going to do about them? It's, this is my mentality. Preach. So what? Now what? Number four of the ten, of the ten going down, uh, you know this. Number four, you got to get your mind right. If you want to stay long term, you got to stay driven. You got to get your mind right. Got to get your mind right. You got to get your mind right. What does get your mind right mean to you? Well, when you hear it, get your mind right, okay. Um, when you're doing any activity, it's going to be a lot of things that pop into your mind. Oh, I'm tired. Mm, uh, mm. Oh, my arm is hurting. Mm. Oh, oh, my knee is hurting. Oh, I didn't get enough sleep. Oh, well, I have this going on with my family. Or that's happening. Or maybe I'm nervous. I don't know what's about to happen. I'm about to face Drew Brees. I'm about to face Tom Brady. I'm about to face this person. That happened. The media said this. That person said that. All you need to focus on is what you know you're capable of. You know the gift you've been given. You know how good you are at what you do. 
you know what your common goal is. So when I say get your mind right, all you should be focused on is finishing. Eliminate the distractions and focus on whatever it is you need to focus on until you finish. Finish, finish, finish. We talk about you know hard work, we talk about dedication and sacrifice and discipline and focus, all the things it takes. Um, don't ever look at any of these guys on TV and say, hey, they just been blessed uh, with talent. Uh, it takes a lot of hard work and sacrifice and the things that these guys do. And I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up for Gerald and what he's sharing. One thing I learned about Gerald, he is always, always tremendously genuine and authentic. He's that way with our 42 teammates here at Fitness Quest 10. He goes around and gives everyone, our grandmas, grandpas, kids, high five, uh, handshakes, pats on the backs, encouragement on that. And that's a man who's who's living his divine purpose every single day. It's not easy when you have five kids and a wife to travel 3,000 miles across the country to train. It's mindset, it's heart set, it's body set, it's soul set. And when you do those things every day, meticulously, maniacally, then you can live a championship life, just like Gerald is exemplifying every darn Sunday, okay? You get about 16 Sundays uh, a year to do your thing, but it takes 365 days of dedication to make sure that that happens, and Gerald McCoy is a great example of what that takes.